Hi, y'all. Welcome back to my backyard studio. Thanks for being here. Today, I'm going to walk you through a painting, an oil painting of this composition right here. It's flowers with my hand in it, hand holding flowers, whatever you want to call it. I have these really fun, um, tall, skinny canvases that I have on hand. And surprisingly, they come in handy, um, pun intended, uh, a lot. And this was the image I took. I went on a walk around my neighborhood, always have my phone on me. And we, down in Texas, I live in Central Texas, we get kind of like a spring in the fall. The summers are brutal. And so everything is green and thriving and there's lots of blooms. And so I took this little bouquet of weeds and it was just such a lovely picture with the afternoon light. I knew I wanted to paint it. And so I finally had use for this canvas and this was really fun to do. I walk through all the steps. I do it a little bit of a voiceover and I just show you guys how this came together and talk you through some of my process. So if that sounds really interesting to you, then stay tuned. Thanks for watching and happy creating. Hey y'all. So today I'm walking you through this painting. I started out on a primed gesso board. I get asked about why painting surfaces from time to time and I'm pretty indiscriminate as in I kind of go through stages of painting on various things. I have recently really liked this um, ultra smooth sort of texture. So there's not a lot of grit here. Um, you can buy this from the brand I like to buy my panels from, which is Da Vinci. And I believe these are just the ultra smooth gesso panels, if I can remember correctly. Uh, but you can do these your, yourself, basically. You can get um, MDF board by itself just in the panels from hardware stores. Um, or you can you buy MDF panels. Sometimes they're inexpensive that way and gesso it yourself. I would recommend if you want this ultra smooth texture to gesso and then sand between layers and sort of rinse and repeat. You can do that usually about three or four times and you can get this really smooth texture. Um, I pay a little bit extra for the time saving of having it already done, but there are certainly um, ways of getting this kind of surface for much cheaper. But I'm going in with my palette knife. So I get asked sometimes, you know, why the palette knife? How do you choose when to use it? Sometimes I use it as a, like a finishing effect. Um, and sometimes I use it to block in paint because to be completely honest, it is a very quick way of applying paint. Um, especially I find with oils, like I don't know if it's because the texture is a little bit different from oils to acrylic, but in order to get kind of a large surface covered quickly, I, I genuinely love using palette knife. Also mixing oil is a little bit more cumbersome. The reason being that it's stiffer and thicker and you have to mix in your own medium. And I find it gets lodged into the brush hairs a lot easier than with acrylic, which is like even the heavy, heavy body acrylic paint is a little waterier and it gets out of the bristles a little easier. So for that reason, I do a lot of heavy lifting whenever I paint with oils with a palette knife. So I do the mixing, especially my initial mix of colors. I also do my base layer application. And the goal, something I'm maybe not quite as good at, but it's like my goal whenever I'm painting, is to sort of thinly apply paint with a palette knife. Um, because if you go in thick out of the beginning, you don't have a lot of space you can build up and you, it's really difficult to layer. And as you can see here, I am painting this Ala Prima. What does that mean? Wet on wet, all in one go. That's kind of what Ala Prima means. And for the sake of content, for the way I paint and work and think, Ala Prima is just how I, I work best. So um, I try to go in thin. I don't always do that. As I'm watching this back, I remember by the end of this painting feeling like I was struggling a little bit with the texture. And I think it's because I went in a little thicker than I had intended to with the palette knife. But you know what? As is life. And sort of the theme of this painting, I suppose, is um, really about the journey. So I wanted to make this video kind of just talking through my process. Like I, whenever I do workshops, I do demos and it's usually me sitting for literal hours and talking through my painting. And I wanted this to be a sped up, quicker, and believe it or not, um, quicker version of that where I'm talking about my process and answering questions. But I did want to have a theme and the theme is the power of moving backwards in your painting. And I'm just going to start by talking about, okay, what does that mean? What, how do you move backwards in a painting? Well, I always think of it like this. If you start a painting and 
every brush stroke you make, every line you draw, every color you lay down is getting you towards a finished product in a way that is progressing the painting forward, making it look closer to completion, that is. Um, that's just, that's painting linear in, in one go at it. And I think especially newer painters and maybe even more <laughs> particularly p- people who aren't painters, you think that the mark of a good painting is the ability to just simply move forward. And I would argue that that's not the case and that most painters I've been lucky enough to take workshops with and certainly myself and certainly how I learned how to paint in college. Most painting styles have the ability to move backwards sort of built in to some degree, especially whenever you start getting into that more impressionistic uh, way of painting. And I'll just clarify a bit. I don't mean impressionism as like, pure dabs of paint lily pad but more in in the sense of you know you have two basic painting approaches i'm vastly (laughs) generalizing here but you have more of this like academic atelier style which is you go in with a drawing and it's grayscale and that's your starting point and then you sort of tint and layer color on top and all that means is that drawing and value are one step color is another with this more impressionistic style of painting I would argue that it's color and value in one step and maybe drawing can be teased out a little bit so that that's what I mean by like impressionistic but typically if you're gonna do that more singer sergeant modern contemporary painting impressionist whatever you want to call it style where you're not doing a detailed underpainting that's a value study you kind of have to move backwards and I'm not speaking to the the grayscale study piece not because I definitively know how that works I've done those a couple of times but more that in this style that I'm painting and the classes I take in this style working backwards is a huge part of it okay what are the different ways you can work backwards well if you're familiar with my work um, maybe more specifically my acrylic work you will notice that there's these random bright pops of color and they show up kind of everywhere and it's usually not just one color but a couple colors And that's because you're seeing the remnants of my redraw lines, which is where I'll work on a painting and if it gets wonky and I get a little bit off in my color application and my, certainly in my drawing and my paint application, then I take that line um, component, the drawing, and I correct my drawing. I go over top of it pretty indiscriminately and I fix the places where the drawing has gotten really off. I find it, I, I really pay attention to the proportions and I'll draw and then I can go on top and you might think that this is messing it all up and yeah this is working backwards but what it allows me to do is build off of my already good choices maybe I had really good colors picked out I drew on top of it and you know from a newer perspective or like someone who's hasn't painted this way it may look like I'm deconstructing but what it means is going backwards for the sake of being able to be more intentional as I move forwards again um the other way you see this is in a painting like this which is i am using my palette knife to sort of scrape and remove paint um as a way to go backwards i i know a lot of painters use this approach this is maybe more common of an approach the redraw lines were something that i was taught for my painting professor who which school of visual arts of new york um for his master's And if I remember correctly, it is kind of an offshoot of Max Ginsburg, who's a fantastic painter. I recommend looking into his work. A really good sort of modern realist painter. Um, I've also seen the painter Nicholas Urubi. He actually has a huge presence on YouTube and a fantastic free resource for education. Does a lot of lives and stuff. But you'll notice that he uses um, line a lot in his work via, I think he mostly uses Elizabeth and Crimson. But aside from kind of that school, um, a lot of people will just scrape and scratch and start over. And that's their approach. Um, I took a workshop with one of my absolute favorite painters. Her name is Mia Bergeron. And she introduced me to using a squeegee to sort of remove paint. And the thing is, a lot of times oil paint will stain. So even if you attempt to completely remove, there's like leftover value and color choices but she also uses a palette knife to sort of scratch and scrape and thin out in a way that doesn't completely remove everything. But regardless, whenever you do that step of scraping away paint, again, to someone who maybe is less familiar with the process of moving forwards and backwards in time, that's going to look 
like you're ruining the painting. You're, you're making it look less finished. Yeah, all those choices may not have been perfect, but they were getting you to the finished product. And the real takeaway in this um, voiceover that I want to impart on you is that is actually a very powerful tool. Not only does it sort of technically and like the function of that help you to get to a more finished painting, but it also sort of busts through this knee-jerk tendencies that a lot of artists, painters have, especially in the beginning of their painting career, which is to be really precious, right? I, well, I got the color of the thumb. I got the color of that cool shadow on the hand. I don't want to have to start over. Well, a couple things. One, you're not really starting over because you're still going to have a little hint of that left over in the painting. And, and then second, and I think more importantly, there's the idea that if you can mix it once, you can mix it again. I know there's probably exceptions to this, I'm sure someone out there is searching for their white whale is that one time they mixed a perfect cool gray and they can never mix it again. And I, I genuinely sympathize with that, but I, I tend to put more energy and maybe hope um, into the idea that if you mix something one time, you can find it again. You can search and mix those colors. Your skill, you, you're only getting better the more you practice. And so, you know, with maybe with the exception of working on a painting and then two decades later coming back to the painting, like maybe you've lost some skill, sure, okay. But with the exception of those extreme cases, I do believe that working through that preciousness and being like, you know what, I can scrape it, I can start over, I can build on top of um, the sort of wreckage of this painting is a wonderful thing to tap into and become comfortable with. Um, certainly, it has been something that I have, I think has moved me forward in the in the larger sense of like my my work is the ability to destruct and start over and i'll also say that if you sort of build that quality into all of your paintings um and, and it becomes something you do with relative ease you know you start to lose that sensation of oh i'm scraping i'm starting over i'm, I'm messing up my progress you i think it makes you a braver person and certainly a braver artist. And why is bravery a good thing with art? Well, first I'll say, I always hesitate to call it bravery because painting, part of why I love it is it is a incredibly low stake task. You know, I'm not a neurosurgeon. I'm not a structural engineer. If I make a mistake, people are not going to become harmed in any way. Like my ego may take a bruising, but nothing really gets, um, you know, it's, it's low stakes. It's not a big deal. Um, you know, that being said, it's still, even when you do lots of work to try to not be so precious with your artwork, you know, you do attach yourself to like the progress and, you know, you can only go through so many wonky paintings before it starts to kind of hurt your feelings a little. And I would say learning to just be okay with, with something falling apart and dealing with the fear, I think that's why I call it bravery, is not because it is so inherently brave, but because you are overcoming fear. And I don't know what else to call that sensation. Very low stakes bravery, but I would say bravery nonetheless. But building up kind of like that constant exposure to like, I, if I'm going to scrape it away and you know what, I will be able to rebuild it. Building up exposure to that sort of negative, scary emotion is one of the most valuable things you can do as an artist. So even if your painting isn't the best in piece, if you learn how to integrate messing up and still come out the other end, a happy person, a painter, someone who's proud of what they did, I think that's a skill that extends way past any finished product. And I think that's what I want to encourage you to do today is tap into that bravery. I'm calling it bravery loosely. But messing up your own painting only can yield you, I think, the skills to really push yourself as an artist in the right ways. And so, you know, if whatever you you paint the next time, I want you to try to tear down, take the scenic route, mess up your painting a little, especially if you think you can push something better and push it further in your finished product. Um, hopefully that was helpful. 
Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully that was enjoyable. I know that the beginning, it all seemed kind of messy with the palette knife, a little all over the place. But the one thing I wanted to impress in this video is that your journey to a finished painting doesn't have to be streamlined. In fact, there's quite a bit of richness in sort of veering off that beeline towards a good finished painting. And the more you sort of lean into that, the more like you your painting will become it's kind of hard to express but hopefully you saw it in the video i wanted to say thank you so much for watching whether you chose to paint with me or maybe you grabbed some snacks and watched i really appreciate it and as always feel free to leave me any comments or questions or maybe ideas for future videos i'd love to hear from you and as always thank you and happy creating